hello and welcome once again to another lesson by Mr. C. This time talking about decimals and fractions and how they are the same thing. I'm not really going to teach you how to use decimals and fractions really or how to do anything with them. But I'm shooting this lesson because every time I teach decimals or fractions, they're two very separate things in the classroom, yet they're exactly the same. So I want to put a picture in your head that is going to help you to see that. Okay? So go ahead, you know, ask me why. Why do we have to know this stuff? Okay? Who cares about decimals and fractions? Don't we have computers? What do we need these things for? Well, I want to give your brain a good idea of what they actually are. Because once you know what they are conceptually, like what a decimal is, not just looking at it on paper and going, that is a decimal, but going, oh, a decimal is that, okay? Then they don't get so, or I should say, they're not so scary anymore. Um, and they're a little easier to use. Uh, it's going to help you picture how big certain fractions and certain decimals are. So one of the big hangups that a lot of my students have is they look at 0.043. And they say, wow, that's big. And they look at 0.1 and say, wow, that's small. 0.1 is bigger than 0 0.043. But if you don't understand uh, the size of decimals and fractions, you don't know that and you don't know why. And you're not going to be able to identify that. So we're going to work on that, comparing the size of them. Um, and ultimately, you know, decimals and fractions help you when you're splitting things up, when you're dividing, when you have remainders, when you're, you know, you got a, uh, a bag of candy and you and your buddies are all splitting it up or, uh, you know, pizza, cutting up pieces of pizza. Fractions and decimals deal with dividing things up or breaking them into smaller pieces. Okay. So whew, let's get into this. We don't have all day. Let's do it. All right. First, let's look at the two words. Our first word, decimal. And our second word, fraction. What is a decimal? Not what does it look like on paper? What is it? Well, it's a piece. A decimal is a piece of something. It could be a big piece of something, right? But it is a piece, okay? So now let's look at a fraction. What's a fraction? What is a fraction? Now, what does it look like on paper? What is it? Guess what? A fraction is also a piece. They are both pieces of something. Okay? All right. I'm, I'm going to throw some graphics up. Uh, you may have seen a decimal chart like this before. <laughs> All right? This is the place value of decimals. And as you can see, there's a decimal point in the middle, and then we have our normal whole digit place values to the left-hand side, ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, millions, and on up through infinity. Uh, and then to the right side of the decimal point, we have our fraction place values. And I'll, I'll point that out right here. Okay, we have our tenths and our hundredths and our thousandths and ten thousandths. Ignore this number down here. It's not important. Uh, it's just a number that was plugged in to show that, you know, digits can actually go there goes down to the millionths, and then decimals also goes on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. But you're not going to worry about that um, because probably where you are in math right now, you're not uh, dealing with decimals that go on forever and ever and ever. So let's just stop at the hundred thousandths or the millionths, okay? All right, so, so it, decimals are a piece. This is how I'm going to give you a good picture of that. We're going to take a look at what a fraction is, okay? A fraction is also a piece, but I think a fraction is easier to visualize. All right? Are you hungry? Not even a little? Maybe a little? How about if I show you this? Oh, oh pizza? Oh, my gosh. Pizza has to do with fractions? Yes. Every time I teach fractions, I use pizza. First of all, pizza is amazing. But second of all, you can cut pizza up into pieces. Okay, so I'm going to start off by showing you the simplest fraction. If you cut a pizza square down the middle, you have one half on this side. <gasps> I just wrote a fraction. And one half on this side. Okay, so if you were going to share a pizza with a buddy, you would each get one half. Here's your half. Here's your buddy's half. Okay, all right. We're going to cut the pizza. Let's say this time we have two buddies with us. 
we're going to need to cut this pizza into three pieces. That's pretty close to three pieces. Well, now each of these pieces is one third of a pizza. Oh, I see. So the number on the bottom is how many pieces there are all together when you cut up the whole thing. So we have a whole pizza. We cut it into three pieces, and that's how we get the number on the bottom, which is called the denominator. And we'll get into that further when we really dive deep into fractions. But for now, we can just call it the number on the bottom if you want. Okay, so the denominator, or the number on the bottom, is the total number of pieces. Cut it into three, they're each thirds. So if you had two buddies, you would each get one third. Okay, now, those are the two tricky sounding ones, halves and thirds. Okay, first of all, what's bigger, a half or a third? What would you rather have, a half of a pizza or a third of a pizza? Well, a half of a pizza, obviously, it's bigger. So if you cut it into less pieces the pieces are actually bigger. And that'll hang some kids up because they'll, they'll say, oh, a half and a third, and they look at it on paper and go, well, three is bigger than two, right? So a third is bigger. No, a third is smaller, okay? Because you're cutting up the whole thing into more pieces. It doesn't have to be a pizza, it can be a cupcake. Okay? You cut a cupcake into three pieces. Or it can be a rope, okay? If you cut a rope into three pieces, and you cut the same size rope into two pieces, well, which pieces are bigger? The halves, okay? So halves and thirds are the first ones. Now is where we get into kind of a speech pattern, okay? Now we have fourths. Ooh, there's that sound. If you cut a pizza into four pieces, they are each fourths. Okay, here's a fourth. Here's a fourth, here's a fourth, and here's a fourth, okay? Now, maybe sometimes you cut a pizza into fourths even though you're splitting it with one buddy and you each eat two fourths. So if I were splitting this pizza with you and we cut it into four pieces, well, I would get two of those fourths and you would get two of those fourths. And all together... If we put my two-fourths and your two-fourths together, we would have a whole pizza, or four-fourths, okay? Now this pattern continues. Guess what you call it if you cut a pizza into five pieces? Oh no, five is hard for me, but I think I can do it. Let's see. So I start out by doing a small wedge at the top. Let's cut this top one in half, and this bottom one into three pieces. Yes! Okay, that's close. <clears throat> Guess what you call it if you cut it into five pieces? Five equal pieces. Yeah, they're called fifths. Okay, so we've now cut our pizza into fifths. And what if we cut it into six pieces? Sixths. And then sevenths. Guess what comes after sevenths? Eighths. I'll show you eighths again, just because it's an easy one to show. <clears throat> When I cut something into eighths, I start out by cutting it into fourths and then cut the fourths in half. And you get an eighth. Okay, each of these pieces are eighths. So now that's gonna give us a picture of fraction size. So the bigger the number is on the bottom of the fraction, the smaller the pieces are. But be careful, because sometimes you might have seven eighths, right? You might say, oh, those are small pieces. Yeah, but there's a lot of them. You have almost all the pieces, right? If you ate seven eighths of a pizza, oh my gosh, you would eat this piece, and then 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 this piece, and you would only have one piece left. So if you ate seven eighths of a pizza, and a buddy ate a half of a pizza, well, who ate more? Let's quickly take a look at that. Let's see how much a half is. Cut it in half, your buddy ate this much. Well, who ate more? You did, you ate seven eighths, you ate almost a whole pizza. Okay, where are you going with decimals with this, Mr. C? Okay, well, we stopped at eighths, but let's keep going for a second. Let's go to ninths, and then on to the next one. What if we were to cut a pizza 
into 10 pieces. I'm gonna do my best. Once I start cutting them into smaller pieces, they get harder to do, but I'm gonna try here. Oops, that is not gonna be good. But anyways. Oof, these are not all equal sizes, but imagine that they were all equal sizes. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pieces. What do we call each piece if we're talking about it in fraction form? That's right, one tenth. Hear that sound? Where have you heard the word tenths before? Uh, alarm clock, wake up, a derfy der, right here. Tenths, it is our first decimal place value. It comes right after the decimal. You go, whoa, whoa, there's a place value for a fraction size? Yes. It, why did they pick tenths? Well, tenths make easy patterns because ten tenths, if you put ten tenths together, what do you get? Well, you get a whole. So if I were to add a tenth and 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 a tenth, I would get one, right? I would get one pizza. Or if I were talking about it in decimals, right? If I'm adding a tenth plus 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 a tenth, and I add 10 of them together, what do I get? One. Wait, but if I add a tenth and a tenth and a tenth and a tenth and a tenth, I get one pizza. Whoa! This is exactly the same as this. One tenth in decimal form and one tenth in fraction form are the same thing. You could write them and they would represent the exact same thing. You could eat a tenth of a pizza or you could eat 0.1 or one tenth of a pizza. You've eaten the same amount. Whew. Let that sink in for a second. Did that make sense to you? You might say, Mr. C, why don't they have a place value for like eighths? Well, because eighths, you can't add them up in the same kind of patterns that you can with tenths. And watch, that's gonna possibly make a little more sense when we go to the next one. I'm gonna erase all this stuff off the screen, okay? because I don't want it to get too clouded and too cluttered, but I will change colors. Let's look at the next place value for decimals. Hundredths. Hmm. Take a guess how that might look on our pizza. If you had hundredths of a pizza, how many pieces would you have to cut this into? Yeah, a hundred. I can't even do that. Okay, I'm just gonna pretend like I can do that. Okay, I'm gonna cut this thing into a hundred equal pieces. Okay, I'm just pretending. I'm not actually doing this. Okay, and I've got. Okay, and I've cut this thing up, and there's a hundred pieces now on a pizza. Have you ever seen a pizza cut into a hundred pieces? No. Why? Why wouldn't you cut a pizza into hundreds? Because each piece would be like. This big, okay? You'd have to eat like 10 of them to even add up to one normal size piece, okay? So you now have a teeny tiny little piece when you're talking about hundreds. But look, there is a place value for hundredths. So if you had one hundredth, you really have 0 0.01. These are the same. They are equal. You could have a hundredth of a pizza, or you could have a hundredth of a pizza. <gasps> Mr. C, does that apply when you're talking about thousandths? Yeah. If I could cut this pizza into a thousand pieces, I would have one, each piece would be one thousandth. And I could also write that as 0.001, one thousandth. 
Let's say I had two of those teeny little pieces. Or let's say I had seven. I would have seven thousandths, right? Seven, the seven at the top shows how many pieces I have. And then the number on the bottom shows how many pieces I've cut it into. So I have seven out of the thousand that I've cut. Well, I can write that as a decimal too. 0. 0. 0.007. Sometimes people write their sevens with little lines in the middle. I like to. Whoa. Do you get this here? Do you see, first of all, the size that we're talking about here? Okay. When we're actually cutting it into smaller pieces, the number on the bottom gets bigger. And it even sounds bigger if you're hearing it for the first time. Thousandth? Doesn't that sound big? It's not. It's tiny. A thousandth is tiny. Think about a millionth. Oh man, I have a millionth of a pizza. If you had a millionth of a pizza, it would be like that big. It'd be like a crumb. Okay? But if you had a tenth of a pizza, it would be like a regular sized piece of pizza. Okay. Now hopefully that's going to help you to compare sizes of not only decimals, and but fractions as well. I want to show just one more quick little thing about decimals. Let's say that you had, I don't know, we're talking about thousandths here. Let's say you had 75 thousandths. I want to show you how to write that in decimal form. Okay, You might say, oh, it would be point. 0, 0, 0075. No, it wouldn't. 75 thousandths, you put the 5 in the thousandths place, but the 7 would actually go into the hundredths place. This is 75 thousandths. So as you write the number in decimal form and it gets bigger, right? Like you have a bigger number, 75 thousandths, or let's say you had 100 thousandths or 150 thousandths. You don't write it starting here and going this way to the right. You end it at the place value that you're at. So your last number goes into the thousandths place. So when you have 75 thousandths, maybe I can write it down here. Okay. Take like a mental picture of this. And I'm going to write it down here. I'm going to write 75 thousandths. Ooh, look, there's already a 7 there for me. 75 thousandths, you put the five in the thousandths place, and then the seven would go in the hundredths place. And I would fill a zero into my tenths place. So it would be point zero seven five. Okay, 75 thousandths is point zero seven five. Okay, you read the last place value, and you write your last number in the last place value. So 75 thousandths. Okay. Whew. Big lesson. Hard concept. Think about it. If it doesn't make sense, watch this again. Ask questions about it. There are teachers out there that will help you. Do you know me? I will help you. Ask your parents. Maybe this is something they can help you with. Maybe it's not. Maybe this is a good time to find somebody you know, around you that's really good at math that can help you out with understanding how is a fraction and a decimal the same thing? When you see these decimals, you can think about it like pizzas where you're cutting it up into lots of different pieces, okay? Let's quickly go over, I know we're running way over time here, but let's go over what we learned. First thing, fractions and decimals are pieces of something, okay? So technically they can be the same thing, all right? We learned how to write fractions uh, or, and how to uh, kind of compare the size of them. Okay, so we know how to write a half, right? And we know in our head how big a half is. We know how to write an eighth. We know how big an eighth is. And then we can start adding them together and comparing size as well as we move forward. Um, we also learned what decimal place values represent what fractions. Now we know what a tenth is, right? The tenths place. Oh, I get it. That's why we call it the tenths place, because we've cut something into ten pieces, and that's how many pieces of it we have. Oh, the hundredths place, the thousandths place, the ten thousandths, the hundred thousandths, the millionths, okay? We're just cutting it into smaller and smaller and smaller pieces, okay? Let's try this. You got to play with it if you're going to learn it, okay? I want you to take these following numbers and write them as both decimals and 
fractions. Here's your first one, three-tenths. Back it up and look at that place value chart if you want, okay? And write three-tenths as a decimal and a fraction. All right, now I want you to write eight-hundredths. And finally, this is the hard one, write 37 thousandths. Can you do it? Good luck, all right? If you can get this picture in your head, and you know that decimals and fractions are really just pieces, as you move forward and you start actually using this, okay, to do different math problems and to solve things, it's gonna help you realize what you're doing without just being like a, a math monkey and going, this is the answer to the problem. You're going to go, I know why that's the answer. And that's important. Okay? Good luck and keep working.